Always a pleasure to be here with Kurt Cassidy and Dr. Paul Mettler of the Retirement Education Foundation. I'm Megan Mozak, and we talk about retirement planning here on the program. Want to make sure that you know Kirk and Paul, they teach courses throughout our community all year long, and these are in-depth courses courses that can really help you become retirement ready. If you're feeling like you don't have your footing when it comes to this next stage of life, you owe it to yourself to get informed, to sign up for a class. We're going to tell you all about how to do that, how to get in the know. Also want to let you know that they're on Facebook. You can search Retirement Education Foundation, follow them so that you can be up to speed on everything Kirk and Paul are doing right now to help you get ready for retirement. Kirk, Paul, great to be back with you. It's good to be back, Megan. It's good to be here. Now, the two of you are helping us get retirement ready. You've been doing this for years now, and you've seen a lot. You've seen a lot of successes, but you've also seen some failures. You've seen some mistakes, big mistakes people make when they're trying to plan for retirement, especially when they're doing this on their own. And I want to talk to the two of you about that. We're going to discuss some of the top financial mistakes people make when they're sitting down and getting ready for retirement, planning out retirement. It's important we don't trip up in this this stage of the game, correct? Yes, it is important because there's no do-over. I mean, I, it's remarkable how unprepared baby boomers are for this phase of their life, which will be their most vulnerable stage of their life, right? No, Paul, no, they will no longer be dependent on someone else sending them a paycheck, Right. right now, right. they have to provide their own paycheck along with the Social Security that they will eventually get, and it's it's remarkable to me. Some of the Paul's done some research for the show, and some of the statistics of of people who are as old as they are and haven't prepared or began to prepare at all or think about retirement and what it's going to take, with an assumption that they're going to be able to decide when they get to retire. That's right. that's the most naive piece of this, I think, is that they get to determine how long they work. Well, <laughs> and, how, slip, and, but, and how long they live. I slip, but it's the same thing. Right, like, you right. get to choose when you die? Well, right. No. Do you get to choose when you get to retire? Well, if you're really super fortunate, you do. Unfortunately for many, they don't, which, which we've seen well over 3 million baby boomers forced out of the workforce since the beginning of COVID. So this is a good example of COVID causing forcing retirements, right. but it, it could I, be know, recession. It could right. be health. It could be so many things, Paul. I, I think, I think what's most disturbing to me, you just named things that are out of their control, like, like COVID's out of their control, right? There are, whether you get terminated is out of control, but what's crazy is there are things in our control and, and we're going to give some statistics. The ones, and we've been saying this forever. What's amazing is 30, 40% of people nearing retirement have done nothing to plan for retirement. And this is the thing that is in their control, right? They can decide to, to actually do something about this and people are not doing enough. They're not doing, there, there are 30, 40% of the people who are planning out, who are near retirement, who've done nothing to plan for the retirement. I can't put my finger on it because we see it even sophisticated, even people who have resources, it's if they don't fully understand it, we want to avoid it. I think they're avoiding it because the reality that they may be getting older, right? And when we look in the mirror, maybe we don't see that we're getting older or feel we're getting we, we I feel, see I, I'll be honest I with you. See, I see it. I know, but particularly men, we think we're invincible. Sometimes right. time gets away from us and I blink and I'm now fifty years old, right? And that's why Ten years ago, we started a, a nonprofit organization specifically to help people to and through retirement. Not a simplified educational course, but a seven-hour intensive course preparing you to avoid all the mistakes that many of you will make in retirement if you don't prepare and educate yourself. And I, I, we get on this show every every week, Paul. Like I want to just shake people and saying, listen. I don't care what your sophistication level is. Trust me, you need seven hours of an educational course, and we're teaching it at all the major universities, or sit in your home. We'll stream it to you live from the university, and all you have to do is make a $29 donation to charity, and you can get education that you don't have. If you'd like to register for one of those classes, you should go to retirementplanningedu.com, retirementplanningedu.com, or call 800-240-8981. 
Kirk and Paul, I'm excited about this show because let's face it, no one wants to make a mistake. And you definitely don't want to make a mistake with the rest of your life, right? This final phase of life, retirement. This is so important. So much hinges on all of the decisions we make and they build upon each other, don't they? They do. It's this, this requires planning. It requires, see, here's the problem. I, a lot of people listening have had a tremendous, baby boomers in general, as a, um, as a, gen, as a cohort, yeah, as a cohort, as a group, have really done well to accumulate wealth. Really, well, the best generation we've ever had to accumulate wealth. Um, the greatest trans, tran, transfer of wealth going from the baby boomers to their children will occur. And so a lot of people have gotten a little overconfident. They really believe that what is going to drive their retirement plan is the investments they choose. And that is, if we have a list of 10 things that are important about retirement planning, choosing the investment is like fourth or fifth on that list. There are so many other variables that you haven't had to be confronted with to it throughout your whole lives and in terms of accumulating your wealth it's so different the distribution the income planning when do i take my social security when do i take money out of my iras when do i take money out of my non iras my roth accounts do i need life insurance should i have life insurance how do i deal with long term care what about health care expenses these are all things that we're going to cover today in our show we're going to talk about a lot of these things and how this generation, the baby boomers, just they're, they're underprepared, totally underprepared for what is in, in front of them. And, and many of them are going to be coming in to this challenge with the market at an all time high and a lot of uncertainty politically and just at the most expensive time in history to retire in the lowest interest rate environment ever. It's like a perfect storm for retirees who aren't prepared for it. And it's, it's really critical. We teach a seven hour course. It's all you have to do is make a $29 donation to charity and we will help prepare you to and through retirement. If you've been listening to us for a while, Please register seven hour course. We're teaching it at all the major universities. So if you're unsure if it's credible, we've been teaching at all the major universities for almost 10 years now. You, we will stream it to you live in your home if you're afraid because of COVID. So you can stay there and we will send the 200 page textbook to you so you can attend this seven hour course. So register at retirementplanningedu.com, retirementplanningedu.com. Or call 800-240-8981. And we're back with Kirk and Paul right after this. Glad to be here with Kirk Cassidy and Dr. Paul Mettler. And we are glad to have you with us here on the show today. This is an important program as we talk about retirement planning. And, and that's that's our focus week in and week out. Kirk and Paul are diving into a topic that I think everyone needs to hear. And we're trying to get out in front of some of the biggest planning mistakes people make when they're trying to plan for their retirement. And really, this is no knock on people out there because let's face it, Kirk and Paul, we've never retired before. So chances of us making a mistake are pretty high. The two of you, though, on the other hand, you're helping people retire every day. So you know what to look for, correct? Well, I, yeah, I think we do. We've, we've helped thousands of people. We've taught I don't know how many thousands of people and the classes we've created uh, now are being taught at universities and, and colleges all over the country. And so we have had the opportunity to teach a lot of people, but we also have a private practice where we're responsible for over a thousand people now and a billion dollars. So we have a pretty good sample size of knowing where the traps are, where the mistakes are. I think one of the biggest variables, Paul, that we've been able to take away and we track and we've studied and given Paul's background it's been a priority uh, for us is um, the the retire the retirees behavior psychologically the impact that retirement has on your money your relationship with money and how it evolves the the challenges you, many of you are going to be confronted with you don't know that you're going to be confronted you would never have thought you would have these challenges and concerns and fears but as you become more vulnerable and have to take care of yourself financially literally. And there is no margin of error. There's no do-over. Oops, I made a mistake, so I'm going to go back to work at 78 years old once I realize I made a mistake. You can't do that. So 
that fear, anxiety, you're going to have re- anxiety and fear around money that's going to cause behaviors that are very damaging in retirement if you don't educate yourself and there isn't a plan to help navigate and manage those emotions, Paul. Yeah, so here's the greatest paradox. You said in the, in, in the, in the show a few minutes ago that this is the greatest transition of wealth in our history, right? Yes. Baby boomers have done this most amazing job saving and working, yet only one in 10 baby boomers think they have enough. Isn't so you crazy? think about this paradox where the problem is because they're not planning, they, you know, most baby boomers have no idea whether they have enough. What a shame. You've worked all your life. You saved yeah. all this money and you're all going to enter into retirement, not knowing. And what is it? What does not knowing mean? And, and you, you just, you just said this behaviorally, not knowing if you have enough means you're going to waste these years. You're not going to enjoy your retirement because you're going to be fearful that you're going to overspend and what a waste. I okay, mean, what so, a crazy waste. So, so Paul, you nailed it. And, and so let me, let me talk to those people who are retired and, and have just been retired a little while. Not those people preparing for retirement because you're not going to relate to this, what I'm going to say to you right now. But tell me if this sounds familiar. I worry about who's being elected. I'm worried about who's being impeached. I'm worried if we're having a recession, a depression. I'm worried about the pandemic and the impacts that. I'm worried about the civil unrest. And that is, those worries are altering my behavior with money. Financially. With, with money. My my investments, whether I'm doing home improvements or not, what I'm spending, whether I go on vacation. If I, You are going to have short-term market events. Short-term events in general, whether it's health-related, whether it's uh, political, whether it's uh, economical, or market related. These events are going to happen and they're going to happen every five to seven years throughout your retirement. So if every time an event is occurring or you don't like being who's being um, elected or impeached or who the president is or isn't, if every time this happens, you're going to react this way, not spend, not travel, not do something, not retired if you otherwise had planned to retire, then you don't have freedom in retirement. You, you've you worked your whole life to amass this wealth, and you're letting short-term market events to drive your decisions. That is... It's a waste. It's a, it's a waste. Total it's a waste. waste. And, it's, and it's prevalent, Paul. It's so prevalent. I want you to get your point, but it is so prevalent that I don't think people... Because those who haven't wor- retired yet will tell me, oh, I didn't panic in 2008. Nothing. That, stop. Your relationship with money is going to be different. No, I, I think that's... I loved how you set that up. And I think here's the thing. You know, again, given the fact that this is the greatest transition of wealth in our history... The fact that there are all those people out there who heard you and are sitting there saying, yes, I'm worried about all those things. Yes. The, the bottom line is if you actually plan, guaranteed most of you wouldn't have to worry. Well, Paul, That's the waste. Well, Paul, the problem is they're not always exactly sure what planning is. Some of them will say, I did plan, right? And you haven't. So first, look, don't hire somebody to help you until you spend seven, eight hours in one of our courses. It, we're a nonprofit organization strictly devoted to financial literacy and education happens to specialize around retirement, but we do work with, with high school kids too. But it, the, the, the focus is helping you prepare for retirement. And you don't know whether you don't even know what a plan is. You need to spend because what our industry is telling you, what is a plan? Isn't a plan. A probability of success isn't a plan. A spreadsheet telling you to take out 4% a year. That's not a plan. If it's not telling you year by year what account to take money from, from which account, what age, what your taxes are going to be over the next 30 years based upon today's tax laws so that you can make an educated decision on whether what dollars you should take and spend now if you think taxes are going up. If you don't have freedom, you don't feel freedom, I'm telling you, you don't have a plan. And what is it? Only about 5% of retirees have a comprehensive plan. So I'm telling you, you don't have a plan. But a lot of people don't know that they don't have a plan, Paul. That's the problem. Right, right. We, you know, it's hard to know if you don't – I mean, if you've never seen something, it's hard to know what to look for. That's right? why – spend seven hours. Make a donation to charity, $29. Spend seven hours. I know some of you people are going to say, I'm, I'm super smart. I, I, I've got my MBA. Well, they may be super smart. They are. Right. But they don't know anything related to retirement planning. It's not – Look, uh, uh, reading a balance sheet, it's not analyzing a profit loss statement. It's not trying to decide if a company is a strong or, or not. It's 
income planning isn't investing. A retirement plan isn't just investing. That's the easiest part. It's one of the easiest things we do. So again, we teach seven-hour courses at all the major universities and have been doing it forever. University of Michigan, Eastern Michigan University, Michigan State University, Novi Campus, Oakland University. We also teach it right here in our learning center in Livonia. And since COVID, we have been streaming these live through Zoom so you can stay in your home. And we go through the seven-hour course. We send the 200-page textbook to your home. And we are going to teach you how to construct your own retirement plan. We first teach you where the traps are, the mistakes that you are likely to make, how to avoid them, and then how to construct the plan. If you'd like to register, go to retirementplanningedu.com retirementplanningedu.com or call 800-240-8981. We're back with Kirk and Paul straight ahead. Happy you're with us here on the program today. It's always a pleasure to be joined by Kirk Cassidy and Dr. Paul Mettler of the Retirement Education Foundation. If you go to Facebook, if you're on Facebook, you should be following them and you can search Retirement Education Foundation. Make sure you follow them, you like their page, and you'll be up to speed on everything they're doing to help you get ready for this next phase of life, for retirement. We're talking about some of the biggest mistakes that people tend to make when they're planning for retirement. And, you know, It's really important to have that plan because, Kirk and Paul, you say when you don't have a plan, there's a lot you don't know that could hurt you, correct? Well, for sure. In in the two areas that is probably most common is those people underestimating what they need or under overestimating. Nope, I said that wrong. Yeah. You say it, Paul. I, no, I, I think the pro- when you don't have a plan, the problem is either people overspend or underspend, right? They're either right. not enjoying their life, so they're not spending, or they're spending money they shouldn't. And here's a, a, a statistic. and We see this a lot in our practice where people are spending their retirement funds when they can't afford it while they're working. We see this all the time. About 20% of the people are spending retirement funds either because they're desperate or because they haven't planned and they don't know that they can't afford to do that. That's the risk when you don't plan. Often with it, it, it it's associated with children right yes it's often can't say no can't say no to the kids or we got to pay for the college education or we feel bad for them because they're going through a life event not recognizing that you are also going through a life event you are close to retirement you may not get to pick and choose when that date is and you likely don't have enough here's a, I'll tell and, you. and they have a resource you don't which is time right you're right, right. out of time we talked about someone just this morning about a, a, a new client who does not have enough and continues to pay the tuition on their child, on the child's uh, for go, to go to school. And, and, and in fact, not, a widow, so this is a widow yep. who doesn't have close to enough to retire, has never really worked much in her life and continues to pay for tuition. I mean, talk about a perfect storm. I mean, this woman, and she'll never really be able to go and get a job and make a lot of money. So what is she going to do? I, she, what is she going to do? She's going to have to learn to say no to the children. You all will need to learn that, again, your children will survive. They'll be okay. You can't give your children any more money until you for sure know you have enough. That's the key. And, and, and here's the thing. If you have resources, if you're someone who has saved and you are semi-prepared for retirement, at least you think you are from a financial perspective, many of you are going to underestimate what you need to spend in retirement because you've read something somewhere or somebody's told you that you need less money in retirement than you did while you were working, which is just the wrong. It's, it's wrong. It's not accurate. And, and I always lose people when I tell the study and talk about the study, but the general rule is that you'll need about 78% of your income in retirement. The problem with that rule is it applies to everybody. Now, Just put that in perspective. When we talk about everyone retiring, 40% of baby boomers will get the majority of all their resources only from Social Security. That's all they have. 90% of their income is only coming from Social Security. So they're not choosing to live on 78% of their income. They don't have a choice but to live on 78% of the income. Those people who have a choice have resources The study, that same study also says that 66% of you who have resources will spend more money in the first five years of retirement than you did the last five years you were working. So I'll translate, Paul. 
Studies consistently tell us if you have saved for retirement, you have resources, you're going to spend more money the first five years of your retirement than you did the five years prior to you retiring. Right. right. So the, the answer to the question is you cannot help the kids. You can't give any more money to the kids unless you truly understand what it's going to take for you to survive in retirement. So I, here, here's – That's why education, right? That's right. And, and here's you know one area, and this is, is a slightly different uh, slant to what you're saying is, but here's one area where you for sure will spend more in retirement is health care. Right. Oh. They asked it's estimated that a healthy couple, 60 years old, you're spending either 300 to half a million dollars in health care in retirement. And that does not include long term care. That's people don't healthcare. believe us, Paul. People, people don't believe it. They, they so think look, it's free. No, I know. Do you know how many people think something magical happens at 65 once they go right. on Medicare? Right. Look, right. the average retiree, if you're married, you're going to spend once you turn 65 and you go on Medicare, you're going to spend somewhere between 700 and a thousand dollars a month. We're not lying to you. We've helped thousands and thousands of people. These are facts. And by the way, the healthier you are at retirement, the more you're going to spend. Why? Because you're going to live longer. Your life expectancy is greater if you're healthy. The less healthy at retirement, you won't live as long, so therefore you'll spend less. Paul's number of, it's it's somewhere between three, for most people, it's right around three, $350,000 is what you're going to spend on health care in retirement. That does not include, again, Paul said this, this, that does not include if you have a long-term care event. Paul, what percentage of retirees will have a long-term care event? 70%. 70% 70 of you that are going to retire will need some long-term care support at an average cost of $90,000 a year. $90,000 a year, guys. (laughs) There's so many traps and things to prepare for in retirement. So as you're giving money to your kids when you're 55, 60 years old to pay for college or help because there's a divorce. You may be retired next year. You might have a health event. There might be a recession. You may get laid off. I don't know. Maybe we'll have some crazy pandemic where it kills hundreds of thousands of people and affects millions of people and where we have to shut down the country. Oh, wait, that just happened. Right. So I, I, I joke, but we're getting you're getting to a vulnerable place in your life. Right. You know, it's so funny, Paul, and I think we'll talk about it next segment. The stereotype as you get older, as people get older, they get cheap. And it's it's not. They're not cheap. They're scared, right? And so I think let's continue this discussion into the next segment so that we can explain that point where the going back to the psychology, money, relationship with money, I think it's really important. But I, I don't know why I threw that out there. It, it's like a squirrel that jumped in my head, right? <laughs> Squirrel. There you go. I was trying to follow it. I'm trying know, to follow it. I'm, I'm looking at you thinking, okay. <laughs> Let's talk about the class, right? Again, um, the Retirement Education Foundation is a nonprofit that was created almost 10 years ago, designed specifically to help people to and through retirement from an educational perspective. They don't do any financial service planning, nothing. It's just purely educational. We have seven hour courses that are taught at all the major universities. You make a $29 donation to charity, and you get to attend our seven-hour courses at all the major universities or sit in your home because of COVID, and we will stream that class to you live and send you your 200-page textbook. If you'd like to attend one of those courses, you can register at retirementplanningedu.com, retirementplanningedu.com, or call 800-240-8981. And we're back straight ahead. We're glad to have you with us here on the show. Always a pleasure to be joined by Kirk Cassidy and Dr. Paul Mettler of the Retirement Education Foundation. If you'd like to register for one of their upcoming courses, this is a deep dive into retirement planning. They're going to get you squared away and ready to go for this next phase of life. All it takes is a phone call or you can visit the website to register 800 240 8981. Again, 800 240 8981, or go to retirementplanningedu.com. Now, Kirk and Paul, we're all humans, right? We all make sometimes emotional decisions, which can be fine, but when it comes to our money, you say that can be dangerous. How so? Well, you know, it's interesting. Those people who haven't retired yet, are not going to understand what I'm going to say. Those people who have been retired for a while will fully appreciate what we're going to say. 
Well, I should say those who are insightful enough psychologically will understand what we're going to say, right? I mean, I think to be fair, but our relationship with money is going to change and will change as we approach retirement and then throughout retirement. One of the things that I often say in our courses, Paul, in our radio show also is that old people aren't cheap. I know that's a stereotype. Grandma and grandpa were cheap and they weren't, many of them weren't cheap. Some of them were, let's be fair, but often it's fear. They're not cheap. They're scared. They begin as you get older, cognitively, things are going to change, particularly around math and numbers. You may be able to understand things, but connecting the dots and, and putting it all together is going to get more and more challenging. And when things get more challenging, we tend to pull everything in, including what we spend, our relationship with money, our feelings, how comfortable we are with spending money on traveling, home improvements, whatever it is, as a result, you become cheap, right? I mean, you do, but it's not because that's your typical personality. personality. It's just you get afraid, you get fearful, and you don't always know that that's happening to you. Right. I mean, and that's a consequence of how we started the show, which is if you don't plan, then naturally you're not going to know. And if you don't know, then your, 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 your natural instinct is to try to control everything including spending when you don't have to, right? And and I think that is the byproduct. And and here's the thing. Go back to our grandparents or even our parents, right? This concept of of planning for retirement. I mean, you know, our parents never even thought about the concept of planning, right? Most Unfortunately. People, sadly, they didn't. Yeah. So, right? We're paying for it. That's right. So, at the end of the day, if if you've not planned for it, then of course, you get to a certain age and you don't know if you can afford to spend. What are you going to do? You're not going to spend And then you come across cheap. And I think part of this, as you said this, part of this is we all, as we age, right, we start losing control of things, whether people are dying around us or cognitively or our our appearance, like things change as we get older. So we want to control whatever we can. And the easiest place for people to control is their money, right? And and, and even when they don't have to. And then then sadly, people aren't doing the things they want to do. Which which brings us back to why another reason besides... Uh, baby boomers have done uh, very well financially, right? It's a very successful generation. But it's also one of the reasons why we're going to have the greatest transfer of wealth. Not right. I don't think everybody, in fact, we meet people all the time both uh, on both ends of the spectrum. Some who want to create a tremendous legacy as much as they possibly can, but others who say, whatever's left is left. I don't, I don't really care. If I could spend my last dollar on my last breath, I would. Or somewhere in the middle, but... But unfortunately, because they haven't been truly educated related to retirement planning, it's different than investing. Because they're not truly educated to retirement planning, they don't spend down their principal like they otherwise could have if they just knew and had a plan to follow. So fear comes in that they're going to outlive their money. As a result, they end up leaving far more money than they ever intended. So they never got to enjoy the retirement they've earned. They've worked for it. That was the whole purpose of serving money their whole lives. Right. You know, it's interesting you say that. One of the questions we always ask in our private practice when we sit down with someone is prioritize the importance of not spending your principal, right? Yep, protecting principal. And I always find it fascinating, this contradiction, the contradiction where someone will rate from one to 10, 10, they want to protect their principal, yet... When you ask him, is legacy important? They say, not at all. Well, if legacy is not important at all, why do you care about protecting principal? And it boils down to, well, if you haven't planned, you don't know if you can afford to touch that principal so people protect it. Well, it, it's it's further than that. So, so I usually challenge them when I – because that happens all the time. That is and most disconnect, common. Disconnect, yeah. That disconnect where they – legacy is not important, but yet 10 on priority of protecting principle. Then I say, well, if you could spend – if we knew the day you were going to die, would you spend your last dollar? A lot of people say yes, but yet protecting their principle is the most important thing on their list. It's a 10. It's not just – it, it, it's a lot of it's also conditioning of our industry. Like our industry has conditioned everyone to believe the way to plan for retirement is to protect your principal. That is the core principle of managing your money in retirement. And it's, that's garbage. That is a lazy, simplified rule. Our industry created. So you would self-regulate. They don't have to plan. 
So our industry doesn't have to plan. They don't have to do any planning for you. They could stop, just stop. sell you something. Say that again, because you, you're saying it quickly, but that point is huge. Yeah, our industry created this general rule of convincing you you should be protecting your principal in retirement so that they don't have to do the hard work of planning, so that you will self-regulate. You won't overspend. You will protect that principal. And so it's a lot easier for our industry just to sell you things instead of spending time constructing a plan. That's why before you hire somebody, you need to come to the seven hour class. So you know what you should be looking for when you're looking to hire somebody to help you. I can't stress enough, right? I mean, do you really want to protect your principal? I mean, some people might want to because they want to leave the same amount or more to the kids. But if you don't care what's left at the end, how does this sound? A controlled spend down of your principal just don't let me outlive my money. That's achievable. That's very doable. You just need to understand how to construct an income plan, how to avoid something called sequence of return risk, how to create tax efficient income to be able to manage the tax brackets. And these are the things that we are teaching in these seven hour courses that we have been teaching at all the major universities for over 10 years now. And it's really simple. If you want to attend a seven-hour course, get a 200-page textbook, all you have to do is make a $29 donation to charity, to the charity who is teaching you this course. And you can either attend one of the classes at one of the, one of the universities around town, or if you are wanting to stay home because of COVID, we will stream the class to you straight into your home. We'll send you your book and you can spend seven hours to learn how to construct a retirement plan and what a plan actually is. If you'd like to register, you can go to retirementplanningedu.com, retirementplanningedu.com or call 800-240-8981. And we're back with Kirk and Paul right after this. Here with Kurt Cassidy and Dr. Paul Mettler. So glad to have you aboard on the program today. I'm Megan Mozak. If you'd like to attend one of their upcoming retirement courses, and this is really an intensive eight-hour course, so you're going to get a, a really in-depth view of what it takes to retire successfully in the 21st century. Kirk and Paul, they've been at this for years. And they can help you get ready, gain more confidence about your retirement future. You can call today to register 800-240-8981. Or you're welcome to sign up online for a course, retirementplanningedu.com. Now, nobody likes to make a mistake. But boy, if you make a mistake when planning for retirement, it can be incredibly critical. It can be just detrimental to your retirement future. So Kirk and Paul, the good news is today they're telling about some of the big mistakes people tend to make when planning for retirement and how you can avoid making some of those big mistakes. Kirk and Paul, how often do people approach retirement planning from a position of overconfidence? Megan, um, I, was, I was wondering if you were going to ask me that specifically that way because we find people entering, you know, 60, right around 60, there are the the overconfidence as it's related to retirement planning, like financial literacy around retirement planning, and when they're going to be able to retire uh, is is a massive problem for baby boomers today, Paul. I know, Paul. I know you did some research and you found some remar remarkable numbers around the number of people that thought they could work until 70 and what percentage of people actually could work until 70 because of something unexpected and unrelated. What was okay. the number? So 30% of boomers said they're going to work till 70. Only 10% could. Now that 10%. And, and, and this is not unusual. I mean, I wasn't surprised when I saw the statistic because we sit down with people all the time who tell us, oh, they're going to work till a certain age. And I would say most often end up not for a variety of reasons, either because of health because of their job, because their layoffs, because of COVID. We can go on and on and on. People always think they get to decide when they're going to retire. And sadly, in, in this study, 10% actually were able to. So I, I would argue, and we say this in the class, when you're within 10 years of what you think your retirement date will be, you better start to prepare. Mm -hmm. You better have contingency plans and assume that you might not make it. And what does that look like? And start to get things in order so that if it if 
you have to retire earlier because of layoff, because of a pandemic, because of a health care event. Ageism. Very big. Age discrimination, particularly in automotive, is is serious, right? I mean, there's enough enough uh, lawsuits to support that, right? right? In, in health. It's health, right? Look, in your 60s, you know how many people, unfortunately, we've lost this year in our private practice in their 60s? A lot. Unexpectedly. Strokes. Um, cancer. Accidents. <laughs> I mean, you name it, so many. And so this overconfidence, like I'm on track and I can just, you know, I, I, and how many how many people going into the, within 10 years of retirement, haven't even done their trust documents, their estate planning documents, have financial powers of attorney or healthcare powers, of just totally unprepared, right? And, and that goes along with your, your financial literacy, like what is important in retirement? Just if we just look at basic financial literacy, there was research recently done and they took highly educated individuals, highly educated baby boomers and asked them three basic questions, three basic questions around interest rates, inflation and diversification. Despite them being very elementary questions, only 34 percent of adults, baby boomers, were able to answer all three of those questions. This is a massive issue yet how many of those people are managing their own portfolios investing their money look can i tell you all something if you're investing your own money look if if you're buying index funds or buying the indexes i, I, I don't i don't blame you you're younger that's what you should be doing i would not hire anybody you don't need anybody just save as much as you can put your money in the index funds but if you are picking and choosing stocks bonds mutual funds and ETFs. If you're picking these things, thinking that you can read Money Magazine and you've got to figure it out, I'm, you're you're insane. If you can't tell me, if you can't tell me this basic question, what percentage of the entire S and P 500 is financial services? What percentage is healthcare? What percentage is tech? If you don't know those basic questions, you are not qualified to do this, and you shouldn't be doing this, right? And so there's there's I'm going to encourage everybody, Paul. I'm going to go uh, psychology here. This is your background. I'm going to encourage everyone to Google, and I've been doing this almost every show now, the Dunning-Kruger effect. The Dunning-Kruger effect. I want you guys to Google the Dunning-Kruger effect. Please do this because right now so many people are guilty of starting to do some investing, getting a little overconfident. Once they have a little bit of success, then they think they're experts until the inevitable happens, then they make a mistake, they lose something bad, this can be related to anything, and then all of a sudden they're scared to do anything, so they do nothing, they become frozen, right? So, I mean, you poll Americans today, what is it, 90 plus percent think they're excellent drivers? Come on, we know, we always overestimate our abilities, and you really wanna overestimate your retirement planning? Right. That's crazy. You have no do-overs. You've never done this before. I don't care how good you are at investing if you think you're good. Look, everyone's made money. Everyone thinks they're good right now. That's not what retirement planning is, Paul, right? It's income planning. It's tax planning. It's protecting your surviving spouse most effectively, leaving the money to the children in a manner that they can protect it from if they get divorced or from a tax perspective. So many variables, they're missing the boat, Paul. Yeah, and, and at the end of the day, we will always say this, it still goes back to if you want to not miss the boat, get some education, right? I mean, all of you have, have gotten education on everything other than this. All of you plan for everything, but you don't plan for retirement. So, you know, fortunately, we've been teaching the class for a long time, and it's been more difficult with COVID, which is the reason why we've been streaming it. So if you're fearful of coming to a class at a local university, We can stream our seven-hour class to you. You can sit in your home and you can watch it. And we cover everything that we talk about in this show. We cover in much more detail in our class. If you want to come to a local university, we do that as well. Go to retirementplanningedu.com and you can see when you can either stream it or go to the university. That's retirementplanningedu.com and you can register online. You can also call 800-240-8981. Uh, 800-240-8981. And when you call, you can register as well. We would encourage you 
If you want to avoid the mistakes that we talk about in this show all the time, take seven hours, donate $29 to a, a, a charity, and get some information so you can avoid these crucial mistakes. Much more with Kurt Cassidy and Dr. Paul Mettler straight ahead. Megan Mozak alongside Kurt Cassidy and Dr. Paul Mettler of the Retirement Education Foundation. If you're not following them on Facebook, guys, be sure to do that. All you have to do is search for the Retirement Education Foundation. Just click follow and you'll be on your way to staying in the know with everything they're doing to help you get to and through retirement successfully. You know, that's what they do. That is their focus. And one of the main ways they do that is through their courses. You can register today. It's a deep dive. This is very specific training for retirement planning. 800-240-8981 or register online. That's easy as well. Retirementplanningedu.com. We're trying to avoid mistakes when it comes to retirement planning. Nobody wants to make a mistake at this stage in the game. So Kirk and Paul, having the right partnership and having some of the right advice has to be critical, right? It does. And and Paul, you actually, it's ironic, as Megan says, you have to have the right advice, right? Which I really think before you seek advice, you need education. You really do. But Paul, it's a great example because you shared something in, in the break here between the segments about people who lose capacity. When they become incapacitated, healthcare, cognitive issues, They're unable to make decisions on their own, which, by the way, is so much more frequent as you get older than people recognize. And it doesn't have to be when you're 80 years old. We, Paul, you have a client in our private practice in their 50s that cognitively, they're in a memory care facility. They've lost capacity. What was the number of people that have done zero planning if this happens? Two-thirds. Of adults. Of adults. Two-thirds. Two-thirds. Of adults. Done zero planning to protect themselves. Yeah, I don't think people understand if you're married and your spouse has a stroke that you don't have access to the money that's in their name. You don't have access to their 401ks or their IRAs or if they have an individual account. You don't. Even if you're a beneficiary, you're not a beneficiary until that person dies. If you lose capacity, illness, sickness, accident, whatever it is, temporarily or permanent, without the right documents in place and planning in place... You have no access to those dollars. This is a very basic example. It's a shame because it happens frequently. It's a very basic example of people being totally unprepared. So, Paul, I said it early in the segment, and um, I know we wanted to dedicate the segment on how do you choose the right type of an advisor to help you? And I think you're going to make some points, but I want to make sure that people, I'm really worried. Our industry is not designed to provide comprehensive retirement planning. I don't, I know everyone says they do it, but most people don't. And the problem is most people think what they're getting is retirement planning and it's not. And, but they don't know it because they don't have that basic foundational education to know what they should be looking for and what real planning is. We hope that our radio show is helping people to get an idea of that. We know our seven hour course prepares everybody for that, but Paul, you stumbled across a really interesting fact about, I think it was CFP. Was that what it was? The CFP board, who, by the way, we mentor and train CF, I, CFPs all over the country. Just because someone's a CFP doesn't mean they actually do real planning, okay? It's someone who was good in school and could pass some tests. Doesn't mean they actually do something, right? And you stumbled across something really s- disturbing. What was that? Yeah, I, I was. I got to tell you, when I read that, I was, I was actually surprised that the C- and this was actually, this came out in the Wall Street Journal. And by the way, we employ four CFPs in our right. private practice. So I want to be careful. Well, this is a great, it's a great it. designation. It is. I think where you want to go with this is a designation does not necessarily make a great advisor, right? Don't yes. just because you have a designation. And, and we meet people say, oh, I got it. My, I'm going to find a CFP and that's it. It turns out this, the Wall Street Journal found the CFP board failed to vet thousands of CFPs in terms of their criminal history, regulatory history, statutory history, did not vet at all. So when they publish who has a CFP, this information was not disclosed, which means many of you potentially went out and found a CFP. And when you look them up, did not know anything about their criminal history and they could have had criminal history. 
and it was not disclosed. That's, a, that's such a shame because so CFP stands for Certified Financial Planner. It's a designation. It's a it's a difficult designation to get. Very. You have to have your bachelor's degree. Then it's 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 a two three year. It's a big. It's a it's a great certification. It is, and, and not an easy test to pass. No. Nope. It is one of the more advanced designations to get. We know a lot of them. We employ some of them. I've hired many who really couldn't do a retirement plan if they saved their lives. Really, right? So I think Paul's point is designations are great and they're important. We're not discounting. Paul's got lots of them, tons of them, right? A designation doesn't make someone ethical, and it also doesn't make them that skilled at something. They might be really good at school or testing, or they may be more than qualified to provide a service, but they don't go to the extent they should go to because it's not a great business model. It's not the most profitable way to run their business as an advisory service. And that's why the education that we're providing, it's why we started this organization t- over 10 years ago, so that people could better prepare. One of the most important segments of our class is the last segment, Paul, where we say, we teach people how to choose an advisor, how to do a background check. What do these certain disclosures mean and how to read between the lines? Because our in- industry is really good at creating a perception that may not always be reality. One of the examples we see a lot is, People who are really predominantly only insurance salesmen selling annuities and insurance, which I'm not, we're not going to say good or bad, but they're pretending to be someone who's securities related, who's doing advanced financial planning and money management, but really 80, 70, 80% of everything they do is just sell insurance, right? So that is part of the course is to teach you to read between the lines of what someone is providing you. And then, and then we show an example, multiple examples of what a comprehensive 30 year plan should look like. So that when you go out to look for somebody to help, you now know what you need to be looking for in help. So we're going to encourage you, make a $29 donation to charity, and you get to attend a seven-hour course at all the major universities. You can choose whichever one you want, U of M, Eastern Michigan, Michigan State, Oakland, or we'll stream it to you live so you can sit in your home. We'll send you your 200-page textbook. And we will spend seven hours preparing you to construct your own retirement plan and or to find the right person to help you. If you'd like to register, go to retirementplanningedu.com, retirementplanningedu.com, or call 800-240-8981. Investing involves risk, including the potential loss of principal. Any references to protection, safety, or lifetime income generally refer to fixed insurance products, never securities or investments. Insurance guarantees are backed by the financial strength and claims-paying abilities of the issuing carrier. This radio show is intended for informational purposes only. It is not intended to be used as the sole basis for financial decisions, nor should it be construed as advice designed to meet the particular needs of an individual situation. Retirement Education Foundation is not permitted to offer, and no statement made during the show shall constitute tax or legal advice. Our firm is not affiliated with or endorsed by the U.S. government or any governmental agency. The information and opinions contained herein provided by third parties have been obtained from sources believed to be reliable, but accuracy and completeness cannot be guaranteed by Retirement Education Foundation. This radio show is a paid placement.